QuickBooks Online 2021 Bank Feeds Matching Deposit from Customer to Bank Feed Data. Let's get into it with Intuit's QuickBooks Online 2021. Here we are in our QuickBooks Online bank feed test file. In prior presentations, we set up the bank feed, entered some data into the system, which is now in what I would call bank feed limbo in the transactions tab to the left. We're going through the process of taking these transactions out of bank feed limbo to add them into the glorious location of the financial statements and other reports. So we have our information down below focusing in on the deposit side of things. Let's jump on over to our flowchart with the desktop version. You don't need the desktop version in order to follow along, but we're just looking at the flowchart here within it. So we're talking about the sales cycle. We looked at the simplest kind of process where we just take the deposit, whatever that may be, and then record it as sales when it clears the bank. Then we said, okay, what if it's more complex and we need to have a type of business where we're issuing an invoice and then having to go through accounts receivable, then we can insert the bank feeds into various steps along this process. Uh, so we looked at the first step where we create the invoice, increase in the accounts receivable, other side then go into sales. Then we inserted the bank fee basically right there, meaning it deposited to the bank, matching out then the deposit to the bank to the invoice which would decrease the accounts receivable and record the increase to the checking account with the help and use of the bank feed at that point or we then said the second item which we did was to have a create invoice and then we are ourselves record the received payments when we recorded the received payments we deposited it directly into the checking account at this point the received payment that we recorded not with the use of the bank feeds but independently was going to then recorded a decrease in the uh in the accounts receivable and then we put it into the checking account and then we use the bank feeds to match out to what we put into the checking account directly here the bank feeds at that point then helping with the matching process so that we help with the, like the reconciliation process now we then have the next step or the next level of complexity where at this point in time when we receive the payment possibly we're receiving payments that we're going to have to batch together and it's going to show up on the bank statement in some format that will be different than check than like invoice by invoice amount in other words we're getting paid for multiple invoices possibly with cash for example that would be one example where we would then take that cash and have to deposit it into the bank and it'll show then on the bank feeds as well as the bank statement because those are coming from the same source uh, as one lump sum whereas it will be in our system when we created the invoice in an invoice by invoice system therefore we're going to have to record the receive payment take it through undeposited funds to make it easy to reconcile by then recording the deposit in a similar fashion as they will be seen on the bank statement and on the bank feeds and then use the bank feeds to basically tie out to what we have recorded bank feeds then helping us with the reconciliation process so that's what we're going to do now we're going to imagine then we have multiple invoices that are going to get paid and we're gonna have to group them together. So we're not gonna put them directly into the checking account at this point, but rather put them into undeposited funds, then do another transaction, taking them out of undeposited funds, putting them into the checking account in the same grouping that we expect them to clear the bank in as, so that we can easily then use the bank feeds to double check and help us with the reconciliation process. All right, let's do it. We're gonna go back on over. Let's open up a few tabs. We're gonna open up three more tabs, right click on the tab up top, duplicate it. We're going to duplicate again, right click and then duplicate again. And then we're going to right click and duplicate again. So the three duplications. Then I'm going to go to the second tab here and I'm going to go down to my reports on the on the left hand bottom side. We're going to be opening up our favorite or one of our favorite reports, the profit and loss report, the P&L report, otherwise known as the income statement. So there we have that. And then we'll do the date range change up top. I'm going to make this as of 010120 to 123120. We're going to go ahead and run that report. Close up the hamburger. Hold down control. Scroll up a bit to that 125%. Then we're going to go to the next tab to the left. Same thing, but this time balance sheet reports on the left hand side. Opening up the BS balance sheet down here. Balance sheet report. And then we're going to go up top, range change it from 010120 to 1231.20, run that report, close up the hamburger. 
All right, now let's record our transactions. We'll start off with an invoice. So I'm gonna make two invoices this time and then imagine we're receiving the payment on both of them going to undeposited funds. So we'll create two invoices here. So I'm gonna say, all right, two invoices, holding down control, scrolling down a bit. I'm gonna say new item invoice, new invoice. And then I'm gonna make another customer just so we can customer. So I'll make it customer number 12, let's say. Oh, I'm on, let's say 20. Customer 20. And then this one is going to be, I'm gonna say on, let's say 040120. So I wanna make sure the invoice date is before the bank feed transaction. So it'll work out properly as if it was happening in real time here. And then I'll say, this is gonna be item, let's say 20 matching that out it's not going to be an inventory item i'm not tracking inventory just item 20. i'll say description there it is no sales tax so we'll not be dealing with sales tax here save it and close it and this one i'm going to say is for let's say uh, 100 dollars for this one and there we have it so what's this going to do it's going to increase the accounts receivable 100 the other side then go into sales for 100. Let's do another one. I'm going to save it and new save and new this time. So I'm going to do the drop down, which is really a rise up because the thing is up top. So it's a rise up. So I'm going to say this is going to be a save and new save and new. And then let's do one more of these. And these two will will match out one of my deposits here. So I'm going to say this is going to be customer 21. Save it. And then this one happened we'll keep it let's make it four two just to make it a little different and then i'm going to say this is item number 21 and obviously you don't need an item number the same as your customer number but that just helped me to m memorize this stuff as we work through it and so there we have that and then i'm going to make this one for 4417 because the 100 and the 4417 is going to match one of the deposits that are going to clear that I'm, that's we're going to match these things out to so then i'm going to say save it save it and uh, close it this time save it and close it por favor now note that i could if i go back to the first tab and i wanted to kind of match this out to the deposit in other words if i if i see now i've got my create invoice on the flow chart now i'm going to receive the payment on it now if i wanted to kind of wait till they clear the bank and then wait till they clear the bank feeds and then match it out as we did in a prior presentation we could do that but we're assuming that those that those two deposits are going to go lumped together into one amount on the bank feed so in other words if i if i see if i was happen to know and i say hey i know that this 14417 is from two invoices and i wait till it clears the bank i can select this item and then i can match it you know, I want to make sure the beginning date is is back far enough so that I can do the matching process here. So I'm going to say, there it is. And then I can check off the, these two items. And that and that should, uh, these the two, are these the right two? Those aren't the right two. I can check off the right two items, which are these two. And that will add up to the 144 and, and it would record the transaction. But notice that's a little difficult for me to do because now I had to, I had to see these two invoices that add up to the deposit that clears. It's gonna be more difficult to kind of figure that out because the invoice amount isn't gonna tie out to the amount of the payments. If, it, if the two payments are got lumped together, say they got paid with cash and therefore they entered into the bank with this one lump sum, I'm gonna to have to figure it out to do it in this way and that would be more problematic. So it would probably be easier not to do this. So I'm not gonna do that and, and instead do more of the full service accounting process uh, as we go through so so what we're going to do is we're going to say okay i did the invoice now i'm going to say receive payment but because i'm getting cash in the same day i want to go through undeposited funds so that i can then deposit it so that when it hits the bank and i do the matching process it'll be the same amount i don't have to add two things together to match what's in the bank so let's see what that looks like i'm going to say all right let's let's say what happened at this point in time we've got these two invoices if i go to the balance sheet We've got the invoices increase in the accounts receivable here. So we've got the invoices on 4-1. There's the two invoices. And then if I go back on over, obviously on the income statement, we got the two invoices, income statement, sales item here. We should have the two invoices in here as well. 
So here's, here's the two invoices there. Now we're going to receive the payment on both of them. So I'm going to go back on over and say, all right, now we're going to get paid. And let's imagine we're getting paid with cash this time because that's a typical way or like a credit card that groups it. That's when we need to use the undeposited funds oftentimes. So let's say we got customer 20, customer number 20. And let's say this happens on four or five and the payment method is cash. Let's say we got cash. So now we're gonna take it to undeposited funds this time rather than go into the checking account. So I'm gonna put it into undeposited funds. This, that's gonna be the new thing. That's what's different here. So then I'm gonna record that. I'm gonna match out the invoice. What's this gonna do? Decrease the accounts receivable. Other side not go into the checking account yet, but to undeposited funds, we got the cash in our hands that we're gonna to go to the bank with, but we're not gonna to go to the bank at the end of the day with just that 100. We're gonna to go to the bank with whatever money we have that we have collected at the end of the day. So I'm gonna say save it and new it this time. Save it and new it and we'll do the other one too. So this is gonna be customer 21. And this happened on the same day that we got paid also cash, got paid cash on that day. So we're gonna put that to undeposited funds and select the other invoice. So this is gonna do the same thing, increase or increase undeposited funds, not the checking account, other side decrease in accounts receivable. Let's save it and close it, save it and close it save it and close it and now we'll check it out go into the balance sheet freshening up the report and then we're going to say all right so now we got the accounts receivable went down ar decrease on four or five for these two payments and then undeposited funds then went up it didn't go into the checking account but rather undeposited funds a clearing account one that's going to go up and down this is how much money we have at the end of four or five in cash in our hand which we're gonna to go to the bank and deposit. When we go to the bank and deposit, it's gonna be in there not as two separate deposits, but as one deposit, unless we try to you know, deposit it separately, but we probably wouldn't wanna do that because that's kind of a pain. So now we've got the create invoice, and now we received payments. This time we put it into undeposited funds. Now I'm gonna take it out of undeposited funds, put it into the bank, and I'm just going to, I'm not gonna to try to make multiple deposits i'm just going to group it in one deposit to the bank here's the money i got today deposit it in the bank it's going to show then on the bank feeds as the lump deposit not as two separate deposits but we should be able to match it out then because it's going to record on our side at least in the checking account with those two deposits grouped together so let's check that out so that's going to be the next step let's go to the item to the right i'm going to say i'm going to do a new thing here and i'm going to say now we want to deposit it so let's deposit these items. We're going to the bank. We're going to the bank at the end of the day. Now it's going to go into the checking account and we got these two items in undeposited funds and we're just going to select those two items and deposit. Also note that before I do that, that it is possible that, that you can use the bank feeds at this stage, meaning, meaning now we're here and we put it into undeposited funds. Instead of us recording the deposit, you could use the bank feeds, but you'd have the same kind of problem. Like, I, I mean, you could go back on over here and say, okay, what if now... I tried to go down and say, well, let's say I'm going to match it to the payments that we got now. I go to the matching system and then I want to make the date range go back a bit to, let's say, one. And so now now you've got these two items that are payments, but you'd still have to check them off. So so if, if for example, you wanted the same kind of method that we did last time, you, got, you get the invoice and then the same payment amount and you'd rather have it go through undeposited funds and then to the checking account with the help and the use of the bank feeds, you could use that method. But if you have multiple payments that are gonna be grouped together, you still have this problem of having to check off these two payments to tie out to one deposit, which you can fix by basically recording the full service thing within QuickBooks. So I'm gonna uncheck those and say, all right, it'll be easier uh, if I have a lot of transactions at least, then to do this full service thing, I'm going to take these two amounts out of undeposited funds with a deposit form, put them into the bank separate from the bank feeds as the lump sum of 144.17. Therefore, it'll go into the checking account as one lump sum, which is the same lump sum that we expect to see in the bank feeds and on the bank statement. And it's going to come out of the undeposited funds. So now I'm going to save it and close it. And then we'll check it out. Save, close, checking out, back to the balance sheet run it, run nine, and then now undeposited funds back down to zero. If I go into undeposited funds, 
then it's back down to zero. Notice it did two separate transactions, even though it's with the same deposit here in undeposited funds. So we can do this nice ticking and tying within undeposited funds. But if I then go to the checking account up top, into the checking account, then we see it should be in there as one lump sum. We see it here as one lump sum. And that's good because this is on our books, which should match out exactly to what's on the bank statement and on the bank feed. So now it makes it easy for us to match to the bank feed. So now we're, now we are here. We've done the whole process, create an invoice, receive payments for two invoices, deposit them into the bank in the same format as they expected to see in the bank feeds and the bank statement. And now we could simply go here and the, and it will often then pick this up automatically because the amount will be the same. So if I go into the find the match and then and then let's say I bring this back so I see it the dates are a little old right and so now I've got that one deposit so now it's easy for me to make the match and again the system will often do it electronically because the deposit should match exactly uh, ex exactly on both sides so I can then check this off once again this will not record any transaction now it's not going to record it an increase to the checking account because we already increased the checking account what it does do is match it out so that uh and that helps us kind of with our reconciliating process it's part of our reconciliation kind of process uh, that we'll do so we're going to go save it and close it so that's the that's the last kind of method there that uh, that we can use again no new change to the to the financial statements at that point in time but we helped with the reconciliation so that's the full full process that we have. We've, we've kind of inserted the bank feeds to every point in the process. Now, the other method you might have on the sales side is you create a sales receipt and have kind of a cash basis system, meaning you get paid at the same time the work is done, like here, possibly doing cash sales at that point. Say you're at a store or something, you collect cash at the point in time that you make the sales and whatnot. And then you go to the bank and deposit that information and, or that money and you might have that type of system, how do bank feeds fit into that type of system? We may take a look at that in future presentations.